it's about different configuration files we are using as part of our Splunk architecture setup. Uh, and also we see some significant uh, uh, configuration files uh, of the use and uh, what are the important having those files. All right. So typically, uh, the configuration of files refers uh, whatever uh, we are, our intention is to perform some changes on the Splunk action, then we need to get into some configuration files and we need to do the changes. Of course, there are two options, either for some of the configurations that uh, in order to have some effect, so certain uh, kind of configuration changes can be done with the help of either GUI option. And the, as, as a second option, we need to get into the configuration files under uh, OPT, I mean, under Splunk Home and under ETC. See, this is a place from from etc folder onwards, we will be able to see a couple of uh, configuration files. So this is the place where uh, Splunk has kept all these configurations, and it is also giving us an option to create our own configurations based on our needs. And again, where exactly we need to create our configuration? That's a challenging situation, correct? See, I cannot simply I'll just uh, go ahead and create some new configuration wherever I want, right? It has to be defined based on our request, correct? Okay. For example, if I have to have some changes across the application, irrespective of the user, irrespective of the apps. So in that case, it is always preferable to go ahead and do the changes under system. Let me give you a quick example. How it, how, how it works. See, as of now, under uh, Splunk ETC system, I have default folder and I have local folder. By default, by default, Splunk says do not touch anything under default folder. Because if you look at the default folder, see, as I'm just taking an example of default you know, uh, web.con file. Which is under which is under uh, Splunk, you know, uh, etc system default. See here, you have so many settings. Because of these settings, you are able to see the screen. Because of these settings, whatever the settings you, you guys are seeing here, right? So because of all these efforts, you are able to see this kind of you know Splunk screen. Which means each and every configuration is created for some purpose. So hence, it is not advisable to touch any of the default configuration. But again, if I have to uh, do some modifications or if you have, have to edit some changes for the existing configuration, then it is always preferable to create the similar fold, similar configuration file, for example, web.configuration file under local. You can directly just go ahead and create a, a you know, um, configuration file, and you can do you can, you can write your uh, changes here. Or I'll show you one option uh, where we'll perform some changes on GUI and we'll see whether that configuration file comes under local or not. See, please understand by default, all the configurations of, of system related will be present in default folder. And because of these fold, these configurations, we could see different functionalities here in the Splunk. And if you want to edit some changes, of course, uh, as and when we are customizing our you know, Splunk architecture, then definitely we need uh, some changes on these configurations. Right? Uh, in, order to do, in order to do that, then we'll have to create our uh, own uh, configuration with the same name. Please note that whatever the configuration, I cannot have you know, the abz, uh, dot com. it is not like that. See? Whatever we need to understand, we need to get into the detail that, okay, just for, for one particular stage, probably I may need server.com. If you, if you want to edit it, you need to uh, come back and you need to get into uh, local and you, you need to edit here. Or if, if, if you don't find this configuration, you can always go ahead and create one and do the changes. I'll show you one example how it works. So as of now, we, uh, we are seeing uh, this particular uh, Splunk web port is listening to 8000. See, which means this has to be defined somewhere else, correct? 
so that's the reason uh, it is uh, plunk is listening to eight triple zero four correct how we can check the this as i know so this is in the uh, and this is the global setting so hence i should be in the systems and the systems default and definitely it will be in web.com let me open it and see let me search eight triple zero this is HTTP code because because I have uh, this changes. I mean, uh, this eight triple zero port is enabled with uh, HTTP port because of this configuration. My Splunk is listening uh, over the web. For example, for now I'm not interested in this eight triple zero. I want to use eight zero zero one. In that case, it is not advisable. Edit the changes here. Please don't do that because this is the default configuration. Splunk always recommend that do not touch these things. So what what we need to do? See, this is the this is under under system default web. In order to make the changes, I need to create a web dot conf file. I have to create new web dot conf file under local folder and. If I just create web.conf and if I just uh, do those changes, it will work. But let me try to do that uh, with the help of GUI option, and we we'll, let's see whether that particular file gets created here or not. Right? Okay, let's do that. So what I'll do? Uh, we need to get into settings and come to server settings. So here we have uh, option called general settings. Under general settings, uh, we can change the port number. Right? So we'll see that. Okay, so here see I just uh, clicked on settings, server settings, and this is a general setting. So under general setting, we see many options, right? So we'll discuss them uh, later. But now I'm interested in this, this thing. So, so this is a web port which is useful. If I do some changes, for example, if it if it has to listen to eight double zero one, then I'll I'll make these changes. Right, I'll make these changes and I'll click on save. Now to uh, affect this particular change, okay, I need to restart. How to restart? Either you can go ahead and restart uh, in the command prompt or just again come to server controls, right, come to settings and server control. Here you see the restart plug. So it may take some time. Now, once it restarts, then see it, it has already you know the new configuration file. It, it has already come here, right? So you can see the differences, right? So previously we were not seeing this web.com file, but instead it was having uh, in default folder. Right? So here we have default, but now as we did some changes, then a new file gets created by its own, and this is the configuration file. See, this is the, we are not. Uh, Using SSL certificate, and here uh, explicitly we had mentioned to use eight double zero one as a HTTP port. Now, once it restarts, then uh, we will not be able to access this particular uh, you know, uh, Splunk with the help of eight triple zero. So we should only use eight triple one. We will see that right once it gets started. We'll see. So this is the beauty of uh, editing the configuration. In GUI, right? So if we just uh, make the changes uh, with the help of GUI option, then corresponding uh, configuration file gets created, and also the corresponding attributes also gets created. When we look for this configuration site, for example, let's take you know on this one only web dot configuration file. Now each and every configuration will have a stanza. This this is something called a stanza, and here we are talking about settings. Right. Basically, this setting is having a key value file. So this is the key, and this is the value. So in Splunk, it will be something like this one only, which will have key value for each and every uh, no settings, and for the configuration, will have a key value here. So for a particular uh, key, you prefer a value so that based on that value, 
uh, our excellent personality will work. If you can look at you know uh, props dot com, see this is the uh, stanza. Under this stanza, we have a key and corresponding value. This is the key. This is the value. So once we start with the stanza, so we must end. I mean, it has to be uh, covered with these braces and. Once you have, a, once you give a space, kind of, kind of an enter, if you give, then it will be separated by another one. Which means, until and unless it finds another stanza, it considers it will be the same configuration. Basically, my point. For example, see Windows uh, snail is locked. This is the configuration. You can put multiple number of, you know, uh, enter as. Well. But what, what it tries, uh, what, what, what it will understand? So. Until and unless it finds uh, finds the braces something like this, it does consider everything it belongs to this one. Also. So for now, after this this piece of code scan, uh, there is a braces here. So which means you, it will understand. Okay, there is a separate scan, right? So this is how our uh, no uh, Splunk configuration works. Let's see. Let's get started. Just like see. Okay, this is if I if I try to log with eight. Eight triple zero definitely it's not. Maybe that's the reason. It is saying restarting. Oh, yeah, so it is, so I can't believe it. because this particular Splunk uh, software is available over HTTP port eight triple zero only. Now I'm just using my admin credentials. However, I used to use to log in, but it's not possible for that. Okay, so this is how the configuration uh, will affect our functionality. Right. So we just uh, did some changes with the help of GUI options, and we did see uh, the same configuration files were created in the respective folder. Which means, by default, almost all the configuration will reside under default folder, irrespective of system or apps, anything. And if we want to edit some changes, we need to create a single or uh, same uh, configuration files under local, and we can uh, add our configuration details there. How we, how we uh, just uh, for four stages. This is one place where uh, you know if you want to have you know something called as global related data or it has to be upgraded uh, for everyone for everything. So in that case we prefer to do the changes under system folder. Now if something some something related to apps, for example, uh, if these related to certain reporting apps. So in that case, right, so we need to get into apps. And we need to come to search. And if, if, if your app is search, and if your app is something else, like Splunk monitoring tools, so you can get into search, right? So, for example, uh, in the last job, we did create a couple of indexes, right? Here. For that, a new indexes were created under this, fold, this folder, right? And that's local because this, this is the index we created, right? This is the index we created, hence, this is under local folder. Right, so this is how you know the, the different configurations works in Splunk. So basically, these configurations will be under, uh, under Splunk Home under etc system default and etc uh, system local, and most of the apps related will be uh, reset under apps folder. And once we do some configuration changes or once we edit the configuration changes, we must restart our Splunk D service. So that's what we did here. Correct. Okay, then coming to our uh, configuration files. Of course, uh, as we know, so each and every configuration files in Splunk, uh, which are identified with this .com extension, and uh, most of the configurations, whatever the changes we do, uh, which include system setting, authentication, authentication in the sense uh, we can create the user. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, authentication lessons, we can have some kind of a LDAP authentication, right? So, uh, you can see, see here we have uh, some options called authentication method. We'll discuss uh, these, you know, uh, creation of roles and uh, users and also on authentication, different authentic authentication techniques we have. But I just wanted to uh, quickly show uh, what exactly authorization, sorry, authentication means. As of now, we have we have not selected any kind of authentication method. But typically, in our uh, real time uh, application, in our organization, prefer to, we prefer to use LDAP authentication, right? So if you just use LDAP, 
and it will ask us to uh, give some more information which is related to LDAP. So once that is done, uh, you can save these changes, right? So once you click on new LDAP and once you give the thing, then there will be authentication uh, dot configuration file get created. Let's see if we have else we'll create it later. And this part, this is the authentication. Because of these settings, we could see these many authentication. See, so which means uh, it will uh, let me know the minimum password strength and the number of uh, passwords, uh, uppercase, uh, lowercase. See, all these things will be defined here and. Now, in this case, if you, have, if you have to have some more changes on these, you know, Splunk uh, authentication related configuration, you need to get into system local and you need to create one more. Yeah, here we have, right, we have something called as authentication, authentication.com. Okay. If, if, if I have to edit this thing, so minimum password length, if I have to give as eight, or if I, now, if I have to make it nine, then uh, it, will, it will ask us to have to enter the password, which is having the strength of 10, right? So something like that, right? So basically this authentication configurations and everything which will be under uh, systems. So if you want to have some password related changes or kind of authentication related changes, then we do see them under authentication uh, dot con. So these are all called as authentication settings. And authorization settings, yes, uh, if we, so we have some options to create some users and roles. So these comes under like, I know we can create the roles and we can create the number of users. If you remember, I have uh, two users, uh, Jainu and Raj. Uh, these are the different roles we have. We, we will have a discrete discussion of these things. Uh, coming to users, I have two users. Uh, sure I will, yeah, I have admin and I have Raj, right? So, these users have created as and when we create some certain user here, these informations will be under these informations are called as uh, authorization settings. Let us see if we have uh, those user here, right? So we need to get into under user. Under users, we have the JNU Raj and everything. Okay, now if I just create an other user, for example, uh, Don, and let me give a uh, password to John, and yeah, let me give the user uh, role as well. Let me click on that. So I have created a user called john now that particular user should be created here so this is the beauty of configuration which means i don't have to create a folder again and i don't have to create the necessary configurations uh, which are present here but still uh, that can be uh, done with the help of GUI. but of course most of the configurations will be almost most of the configuration will be there because that is to be provided by Splunk. if you have to edit something so we need to get into local folder and we need to do the changes. So this is how our you know, uh, Splunk configuration works. So if something related to index configuration, yes, we have already seen. So in the last talk, we did create some you know indexes under apps folder, uh, under apps, search, local. Okay? This is the index, right? So like this, you know, in later part of time, we'll be having the clustered uh, environment. And if you want to have something for a safe such as like we have a dedicated uh, search chat, and if we have some some save searches in that case, uh, these you know uh, these uh, settings, uh, these configurations will help us, right? Okay. And coming to uh, file precedence, this is the the biggest challenge uh, to understand this file precedence. Okay. See, let's understand in a simple steps. Whenever my uh, Splunk application was running and which is listening uh, a port 8000, right? So where it was under system default, under default, I have something called as web.com, web correct? 
Now, if you just open a uh, web.com under default, I still see trip, uh, no, 8000 port. And similarly, if I just go here and if I just uh, open local and if I just uh, open web.com, here I see yes, Look at the difference here, right? So look at the difference. So I have a uh, webcon file under local and though I have a web, web.com file under default, which means only for this HTTP port stanza, whatever we are saying, right? So this particular uh, uh, key, he is listening to under local folder, not on the default folder. If you see, if you don't have a, if you don't have any uh, file under local, then fine, it, it will listen to system default configuration. But if you have the same configuration files under local, then it will listen to this first. You know, it will listen to this configuration first, and later it will come here. So how the execution will come? So first, you know, while while starting my Splunk application, when I I just restarted, right? So first it will come to under system local, right? First it will come to uh, Splunk system local, and it looks for the web dot configuration file, and it notes down, okay, there is a HTTP port which is already there in a triple zero, and then it will come to default one, and it will it will check for web dot file and let it it will open, and again it will search for this uh, key. And here it treats that, hey, he has already uh, done some changes on this port, so which is listening to 8001. Now, let me not override these changes, right? So this is so that uh, that's the reason it does keep the changes of local. So this is how the file precedence works, which means, so what the, if you can see the precedence, is the system local directory, right? The system, local directory will take the highest priority of the execution and later it will come to etc apps directory uh, under apps first under apps it will come for example if it comes to system it uh, this is the app under app this is the search app under search app the first precedence will be local and again the third precedence will be under default and the last one will be uh, system settings, the systems uh, default. Please understand, the first, whenever we restart our Splunk, uh, Splunk D service on our Splunk software on, on our machine, so how exactly it, you know, it takes care of the precedence in a sense, the first, con the configuration file gets executed under system local folder, so whatever, the configuration files which we are seeing here, these get executed first. Second, it will come to apps. It will, it will check for some apps configuration. For example, if you see in search, even if it comes to search also, it will not go to default. First, it will come to local and it will execute this configuration. And later, and once it completes local, then it comes to app default. So this is the third configuration uh, structure it follows. And once that is done, the finally it will come to system local for a system default. Okay, so the system uh, default directory will have a lowest priority. Do you see my point? So first priority will be systems local apps. The second will be apps local, uh, apps default, and apps sorry system default directory. So this is how the configuration file. And most of the configurations files we use uh, in our day-to-day -day activities. Some of them I have listed over here, but we will have a detailed discussion on these configurations in our upcoming session. So let's look at inputs.com. Basically, inputs.com is a file which will help us to configure our data inputs. We will see them, right? So because we'll be receiving the logs from this log, we'll be receiving the logs from uh, different applications, from different uh, remote locations. In that case, Typically, we used to maintain these, you know, uh, inputs.com configuration files and usually on the forward We will see them later. And coming to outputs.confirm, uh, outputs.confirm, again, it's on the forward level because uh, here uh, we will we will just mention that where exactly the data has to be forwarded. Right? And coming to indexes, it will maintain all the indexes and their properties. 
uh, as I discussed, authentication in the sense, uh, whether are you interested in LDAP authentication or multi-factor authentication, so all this information will be uh, stored in authentication configuration. And authorized configuration, basically here we'll configure rules and we'll control the access as well, which means if you have, uh, if you have a power user, then only those access control will be given to that particular user, right? So this is about authorized.com authorized and coming to uh, saved searches. Uh, of course, when we have, uh, when we implement our you know, dedicated search set, right? and if we just save some searches, uh, we can see those configurations. And this is the, the most important configuration where it, it, it does participate in parsing, right? So uh, whenever we receive a machine data from application and before ingesting, the, ingesting that data, we do some sort of you know, uh, calculations or we do some sort of changes be, uh, so that uh, those machine data will be converted into a event, right? So this plays a major role. I mean, props.com and transform.com plays a major role, but uh, we'll have a detailed discussion on each and every you know, uh, configuration. And we'll also see uh, how to write the uh, settings from scratch, like how to use the standards, how to use the keys and variables. Right? So yeah, uh, so this is about uh, some common configurations which I was uh, discussing. But yes, uh, the upcoming sessions uh, will start with data onboarding, and also we'll try to understand uh, the parsing mechanism, right? So how exactly the data is getting parsed and everything will. Yeah. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you.